Hello, my name is John and welcome to Ask John D. Jones. In today's video, what I'm going to do is talk about dependency injection and how it works within Embraco 8. Now, dependency injection is this really cool feature. It's been around for a long time, but since Embraco 8, which got introduced a few months ago, it's sort of out of the box and it's a bit new. So people who are new to development, who are just trying to learn sort of solid and dependency injection, this video is for you. If you're a long time Embraco user and you've just never come across dependency injection, then hopefully this video will give you a bit of insight about what you need to do and basically how easy it is to set up and start working with you know solid principles within your code base. Okay, so this is my website in front of us, uh, johndjones.com. On here we have, um, a, it's written in Embraco 8 and it uses dependency injection. So let's quickly talk about how it works. As you've seen the home page here, we've got a home page controller. Now in our home page controller, we've got these two amazing dependencies. Now the doesn't really make a difference what these dependencies are. Um, in this instance, they're basically me being lazy. So instead of having to inject like 10 things inside my constructor, what I'm doing is wrapping it up into some sort of, um, sort of adapter pattern. Now, probably this isn't the best technique, but this is just a simple way of demonstrating some concepts. So basically I've got these uh, two dependencies I'm injecting. Now, the way um, a good practice when you're using dependency injection is to always inject things through the constructor. There are a few other things like service location you can use, but this is considered an anti-pattern. It will also make your unit testing later on a lot more difficult. Now, if you want to follow a really good uh, dependency injection pattern, what you want to do is create a thing called a guard. So in this example, what we want to do is create a guard and this guard will then check that my website dependencies exists. Now the code within this guard is nothing clever or fancy whatsoever. All it is doing is just saying, I'm taking an object. If that is object is known, throw an exception. Now, the reason why it's considered a good practice when you're doing dependency injection is that it just gets into a situation where like your code will fail fast if you haven't got your dependency injection framework set up or you've got something misspelled or you've done like an accidental typo or something. And if you read books like .NET, uh, dependency injection in .NET, sorry, that this is the pattern that people sort of recommend that you do. Now, it doesn't, ha you don't really have to do this, but what you can do is guarantee that when you start working in production, you know that you'll have everything set up because if you don't, things are just going to fall over much quicker. Okay, so if you're new to dependency injection, one of the things you might be wondering is how do these things get like magically injected into your controller? And this is sort of done through the dependency in, uh, framework and it's sort of done with inversion of control. Now the dependency uh, framework is a new thing which is being added into Embraco. Now you don't really care about all the setup and all that sort of stuff because it's all done un under the hood for you. That's a really good thing about Embraco 8 that a lot of it's just done for you and all you have to do is worrying about doing a few custom things to get your own sort of bits and bobs working. So let's have a look within my uh, composer. So Embraco um, has this really nice new feature in 8 and that's instead of, it allows you to take a lot of your logic outside of the global ASCX. So in 7 and 6, what you'd have to do is if you wanted to register some custom routes or if you wanted to register a dependency framework, you might have to write some stuff in your global ASCX. Now this decoupling was a bit annoying because when you upgraded Embraco, sometimes that file got overridden. And what I really like about this approach is it just decouples everything and it's quite nice. So um, in Embraco 8, we have uh, components, and these components allow you to do loads of different interesting things. So for example, I've got a component right here, which allows me to initialize all my custom routes. Uh, I've also got another one, which will register a dashboard. I've got another component, which will register my dependencies. And that's the one that we care about tonight. So if you have a look, line number one, you can see we've got this website dependencies. Now, if we have a look at website dependencies, what you'll notice is this is just a normal concrete class. This um, contains a load of custom code. 
if you want to create your own custom class and you start using dependency injection, all you need to do is create a class and then create an interface. And this interface really is nothing special again. It's fairly simple. It's just, it has the word interface on it. You put the I in front of the class name. So it's just called an I website dependencies. And then within here, you just have all the dependencies or the properties or whatever it is that you want to use. That is really simple. I'm sure everyone can get it. It's probably so easy that even my mum can probably get it. Just for reference, she's phoned me up because she didn't know how to print a ticket out. So, sorry for the little aside. But what we've got here is the top part of my registration. Um, all of these, um, this bit of code here is registering all the custom sort of helpers and everything that I inject within my code base. Now, if you have a look at this second, uh, this parameter which goes into the register you can see you can pass in request which is a um, which will create a new one of these per request I use singleton which basically means just one over the entire application because I don't really care it, it can be used whatever I'm not doing any database writing or anything like that transient is um you know transactional so all in all um, all we need to do is implement this our use component and then we can start adding some registrations now, there's some little quirks that you should probably be aware of. If you want to create a standard MVC route within your code base, you'll have to register your controller with, within this dependency um, pipeline. If you don't do it, a Mbako will throw an error and life will be chaotic. So yeah, registering something is pretty simple. You do a register, um, you put in the type of the controller that you want to register it against, and off you go. So for example, I've got all of these in here. As you can see we have a RSS controller. This RSS controller is just a normal page controller and this is how I register it. You can also, as I was mentioning, do these other components. So components again are things like, you know, running custom routes, uh, registering dashboards, um, registering uh, maybe custom exam and indexes. So if you want to register something custom, you can use the components append. Also another useful one that you might need to think about is doing a register technique. And when it comes to dependency injection within Umbraco, that is pretty much everything that you need to know. As I said, when it comes to dependency injection, there's a lot of complicated terms. So when you talk about solid, like L is the Liskov substitution principle. And it sounds really complicated, but actually if you just follow these basic principles of inject interfaces into your constructions, constructors, register all your custom code within a compose, and you're pretty much following good techniques. Now, when you follow these techniques, what you need to think about is your code will be a lot easier to unit test. And that's really good. What you want to do is use a mocking framework like mock, and then when it comes to say testing your controllers, you'll be able to mock your interfaces and you'll be able to test that things get called correctly. I'll probably go over testing in a little bit more detail in a later video, but I'm hoping that this sums everything up for you. Now, if this has been beneficial, um, hasn't bored you too much and it's been a little bit interesting, then head over to my website. As you can see here, there's loads of stuff about Unbrack 08, why you should upgrade to it, all that sort of good stuff. Um, there's actually a complete tutorial about adding custom routing and there's one about event handling, dependency injection within Embraco. That's what I was looking for. So if you uh, just find it a little bit easier to read through things rather than trying to coin through a video, you can go onto my website. It will tell you step by step exactly how to do it. Again, this is a YouTube video. So if you want to become an absolute legend, this is the easiest way that the universe um, will conspire to make you a legend today. Hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 500. I think I'm on 300 at the moment. If you hit subscribe, honestly, I will think you are a legend and good things will probably happen to you, potentially. If you've got a question or you want me to go over something like this in a video, um, please let me know. Ask on my website. There's a big contact button here. You can email me. It will come through. I'll try and answer it. If you found these types of videos um, helpful for people who've been watching my videos for a while, it's a bit of a change. Obviously, leave some comments because uh, I'm planning to do more of these types of videos. So hopefully, it's beneficial. Anyway, I'm hoping that explains dependency injection to you and it's been of value. I hope you have an amazing day. And until next time, take care of yourself.